Hello and welcome to the Scottish Football Show, an international special for you listeners out there as we prepare to lock horns with our old enemy England. But that's just a friendly, isn't it? <laughs> Forget about those farmers down there anyway, because we're on the cusp of something special under Steve Clark. And joining me to bask in the Stevie sunshine are two Tartan Army foot soldiers. It's TNT Sports, Laura Brannan and co-host of the Scottish Football Forums podcast, John Bleasdale. How are we, troops? Hello, hello, hello. It's such a good time to be a Scotland fan. <laughs> certainly <laughs> is. John, how are you feeling right now? Yeah, I'm good. it's still a bit surreal that we're in, in this um, age of Scotland are not just good, but exceptionally good right now, and <laughs> long may it continue. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into how exceptionally good they were because even though it was Cyprus, what a performance, what a performance it was. Um, we're going to go straight into some of our funnies, Laura, and can you, what's the latest with Hamilton? Because last podcast we talked about their their duplicate or their, I don't know, what would you, what would you call it? They've just got two Twitter, um, two Twitter people, accounts. two Twitter accounts <laughs> posting the same thing. Uh, more of that? Exactly that. The mo- it was exactly exactly the that. that. Like, <laughs> they they've got uh, just a wee recap. Obviously, we were talking about last week. They've got two Twitter accounts now. One which was the one we've been using for the last ten years, um, which is run by somebody who's been involved behind the scenes at the club for a while. Um, but the club decided to take control of their own Twitter account and had to start a new one called the Yakis FC, <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> which is funny in itself. Funny in itself. Um, but the thing is. The red, the old one can't seem to let go, so everything one can't posts, go. the other one posts exactly the same. <laughs> oh. And they were they were away to Coleraine yesterday in the Challenge Cup, and their flight got delayed, and it was just all the same updates. But the thing is, when you follow both accounts on Twitter, they were coming through at the same time. The tweets, so your feed was just reading double tweets from Aki's. Just say that's that mad. So they're, they're actually literally posting the exact exact same thing. But it's two different people doing it. Yeah. Well, obviously. So, so who's posting it, it first? Be, then I wonder. I, I, Someone I must be copying and pasting it and grabbing it off I've of someone. I've noticed. I've noticed the old one has been posting first, and I'm wondering if that person has the control over the new account or not, or where the politics lie. That I don't know. But somebody needs to just let go. Let it go, get over it. It's just oh, looking well. a wee bit unprofessional now. I, I did see some of the videos of the Hamilton fans travelling uh, over at Coleraine. It was really good, actually, to see. Quite good fun. It looked like uh, one of their best away supports, Andrew, because I've seen them bring, like, 20 fans to put Audrey and stuff like that. Now, again, yeah. going over to Northern Ireland is a bit, it's a bit of a day, a bit of a, a trip for Hamilton, so... Uh, good on them for taking whatever it was. I think it was a couple hundred. That's pretty good for them, to be Yeah, fair. pretty good. It's a good laugh. Now, this uh, Daily Record headline, Laura, uh, had a few Scotland fans going like, eh, what? Possibly the fair kind of description of this headline would be the most clickbait headline um, around <laughs> over the weekend. But it was, uh, do you want to give us a little rundown of it, Laura? Yeah, so the other day, um, Scotland squad, um, two boys dropped out. Uh, Elliot Anderson, Liam Kelly both dropped out. Um, we We've been told it's through injury. We've not really heard anything else, to be honest. Yeah. The Daily Record played it up a wee bit. So the, the headline was, Elliot ha- Anderson quits Scotland camp to leave international future up in the air with England circling. Which I think, going by the replies and the, the chat on Twitter, was just, <laughs> what, what are you playing at, guys? The yeah. boy's injured. <laughs> Give him a break. <laughs> It's funny though because what normally happens is it's people sometimes forget that they go for like the actual writer of the article and they have no like kind of say in the the headlines at all. It's always someone else like the editor will do the headlines who are completely separate to the article. And you just hope that they've maybe read the article <laughs> so that they can come. But they just exactly it's exactly what a headline is. It's there to grab attention. It's just grabbed the wrong type of a because you can't you can't really say that of Scotland players now. We don't have players dropping out last minute for supposed injuries. And I don't even think this guy is on the he's on the radar of England, but not of the first team. The thing is, oh. it's it's typical of like digital newspaper deaths these days. They just chase numbers. They just want the clicks. That's what drives them. That's what is successful to them. Um, it's kind of depressing. And they don't really care what their kind of 
how it looks to other people or their their reputation. It's just if we get the numbers, then we're doing well, and they lure people in. And then, to be honest, we're all falling for it because we're all talking about it. Um, we're, we're, we're all promoting clicking them. <laughs> we're promoting it even in this conversation right now. So whoever wrote it has actually done his job <laughs> successfully in his eyes John. and in probably his editor's yeah. eyes. But it's just very frustrating. That's the world we live in right now. <laughs> did you did you click it, John? I, I clicked, I clicked it, but I, <gasps> I knew it was. I knew that it was just um, a lot of rubbish. I just wanted to see what was in there and to show people look at the actual article. And <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I knew from who the sources were that this was going to be. Um, I'm trying. I'm trying not one to, of them. Um, yeah, <laughs> one yeah, of them. Try to be diplomat- diplomatic about it. But <laughs> between that and the Herald article this week, um, having a go at our strikers, you know. We're just support for a national team when they're doing well. I mean, yes, I get that we maybe don't have world class strikers, but it's a better caliber player than um, what we've had in previous years. And to give me Lyndon Dykes over Chris Martin any day of the week, for example. <laughs> yeah, the, the whole the whole idea of like creating an opposing argument to try and um, drum up debate it's, it's not it's not in Scotland's appetite right now. Like we're so exactly. positive. It's just, yeah. it's just an utterly useless tool to try and navigate through like, something that's such a, a, a steam train of Stevie Clark's positivity. <laughs> the actual article was arguing is actually quite fair. Uh, when you actually mm. break it down, there's not really a problem with that side of things. It's all about timing. Nobody wants that right now. And this is the thing we're coming on here today and, Everything we're going to talk about, it's all positive, it's all happy. And that's such a change to what we're used to doing in the past. And and nobody's, like, we've all done it. We've done it for 20 years. We're over mm. that now. Can we just focus on actually enjoying this and, and stop overanalyzing it? The night before a game, it was just very, very poor timing. Yeah. Maybe um, maybe, to, maybe to flip it, what he's looking for is, like, let's just get this World Cup striker and then we'll go win the Euros. That's all he's after. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, listen, do you guys like farts? I know you don't fart, Laura, because women don't fart, but do you guys like farts? Always. <laughs> <laughs> strange I don't know if se- I have the right or wrong answer for that one. It strange the strange segue. But I think, I think Neil Lennon has to come out officially spokesperson or something because did we see the 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 clip doing the rounds of uh plz soccer isn't it uh neil lennon given his uh what was description on something and then he seems to pause and go and then a wee <laughs> sound of a fart pops out um is it real i don't know I like i like how allison's sitting next to him just completely oblivious <laughs> Well, that, if it's real, you know, I mean, the microphone will always be on, you know, near the collar or something like that. So it'd be am- I'm amazed that it's picked it up, to be honest, because if it did, that would have been a loud fart. And Alison would have noticed it. I, I didn't, like, oh. I didn't, um, I didn't hear it, but maybe it's one of those silent but violent ones. God knows. Oh, <laughs> I hope not. But listen, this is why I think I, I don't think it's real. But I I really enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, any more funnies? Did you watch the Scottish Masters on Saturday night? No. Yes. I, oh I didn't see God. all of it. The, I did not know this was actually happening. I missed all the kind of build up to this until basically on Saturday night, uh, just as it was starting. I am now at the age where I'm absolutely buzzing off this <laughs> because... It's all the former players that I grew up watching and I, I recognise all the names. I'm now at that age now where I'm like, I remember you. I remember you and you were fit and skinny and healthy looking and now you've got three bear bellies. Um, but what was actually very amusing and kind of pathetic at the same time was the floor. The flooring just kept yeah. coming up. So they're on um, the Rinbury Head where the, the ice hockey is and they've obviously put like flooring down over the ice and then put a carpet over it. Well, I don't know how yeah. a carpet, they're playing football on it, but... It didn't stick properly. It hadn't set. So every time they went over the the, the crease, the, the kind of connection, the carpet just came up. Yeah. So they're running was... about just pulling the carpet up and it just looked at it. They had guys running on the tape, like stopping the game to tape it <laughs> up again. Scotch tape, of course. <laughs> I mean, my God. Um, I, yeah, it was not, proper slapstick. It just looked a little bit like. But the thing is, though, like it was a really cool event. Like they do, the f- former footballers do this all the time, and they actually get paid really well for it to go abroad and and play in these kind of like masters tournaments okay. and whatnot. So it was kind of kind of cool to like 
see it being properly televised and whatnot. But that was that's a stinker for the promoters that like they've got to do it a bit more professionally like just stick a stick an astroturf down it's all right especially especially when you're charging 28 pound 50 yeah you know which i thought was pretty steep to me i mean our tickets for hamden on tuesday are cheaper than that Mm. so (laughs) um, but i no i obviously didn't get a chance to see it just with um, modern day life that I lead just now, but um, I'm glad it went. I'm glad it went well. And um, apart from that, but it will never be the tenant sixes for me. That's me showing my age. The tenant sixes. What's that? Oh, don't yeah, let so the ten... here you say that, Andrew. Oh no, <laughs> sorry. No, when was this? So the tenant sixes was a competition ran from the mid eighties to nineteen ninety three. All right, um, good. So and it I was, wasn't and really... it was actual. <laughs> yeah, and it was. Was it was our masters? It was, it was actual teams that played. Like um, there was a mixture of first team and reserve team players, and like the defending champions of it are part of this. So they won the last event um in nineteen eighty three. It was always played at the SCCC um back in the day. I think it was at Kelvin Hall before that. I can't remember, but I remember the um the SCC event. It was always televised in Scott Sport. Um, but yeah, that was pretty wow. cool. So. Yeah. Tenants, sexies. If you remember that, get in touch. Tell me who your favourite players were. I'd like to know that because I won't know any of them, probably. On to some news, guys. And um, a, 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 an awesome story in the end, but pretty one of these annoying things where you see politics and football mixing together in such a negative way where the people who actually enjoy the sport see no reason for, for the government to be getting involved. So did we all see, this actually came out, it was uh, Derek Watson on Twitter posting up a a, a press release from uh, from the government, wasn't it? And uh, basically saying to govern and to control um, travelling Scottish football fans and making them do some like mad, like box ticking stuff to make sure that it's safe and, and legal. And it just didn't make any... Like, I'm trying to think of like what the positives were and there was none. But fortunately the whole Scottish football community came out and totally lambasted it. And what was better to see was that the clubs came out and also agreed with their fans and the whole decision got turned around. Laura, you're a huge, massive kind of advocate of fan experiences. Why do the government just keep getting involved in this and trying to like make Scottish football fans and it's specifically football fans? It's well, not any other thing. sport. It's so it's... frustrating that they just look at us and think that we are bad people. Yeah, this is the thing. It originally actually said sporting events. And this was, so the, the, the rules were on supporter buses going to games. And it was listing different things the supporter buses could and couldn't do. So it was things like um, buses couldn't stop anywhere within 10 miles of the ground. They couldn't stop at a pub for a beer unless they had a substantial meal to go alongside it the um it was so it's different stipulations it's all ridiculous um really kind of impacted things like uh, local businesses as well for supporters to go along to to nearby pubs before games it's quite obviously a tradition um but the fact that this document that came out said it was to um treat supporter buses for sporting events but when somebody did a search function on it and checked for rugby and it had zero mentions and it had 35 mentions for football so let's not be about the bush here this was not about other sports this is just football fans getting targeted yet again which Mm -hmm. is just a constant problem within scotland so absolutely good on Derek for for raising it first and foremost um and then how quickly it all could have turned around because i think it was only a couple of days later we had the spfl and SFA do a joint statement to say, and obviously SBFL covers all the the, the, the clubs as well, to say, no, nope, we're not for this, we're, we're absolutely going to fight this. With mm-hmm. individual clubs as well come out and say it, even though they didn't have to because they were all under that bracket. Um, so yeah, we had people speaking up and supporting this and eventually there was a statement that came out saying, um, this just isn't realistic, it's not meeting the standards that we were um, I think it was the police that put it out. Yeah, uh, the traffic yeah. commissioner put out the statement, just saying this is dead. We're not. We're just. This is all the, the usual government um, t- terminology of it's on hold just now, which just means <laughs> it ain't happening. So yeah. such a quick turnaround. <laughs> well done. It was really a case of Scottish football won the government nil. <laughs> I love it, John. Why do the government keep getting involved in stuff like this? 
it's it's infuriating, you know. It's this is a, it's not it's not even just up here. You've also got a situation down south where, after the Heysel, um disaster, because I was reading a book about this, and um, Thatcher um, decided um, to recommend to you ban every English club because she had this hooliganism um, element and decided to just ban everyone for um, what happened at Heysel instead of just the one club that was involved. Um, and up here, obviously, we've, I mean, we've had that silly. Um, Football Be- Offensive Behaviour Football Act um, from 2011, which ar- arose from um, some that happened on the pitch in the Scottish Cup ties between Celtic and Rangers. Mm-hmm. Um, and because of that, they tried to... Um, someone who assaulted Neil Lennon got away with it because they couldn't prove that it was um, se- sectarian motivated. <laughs> it's just it's just crazy, the, the, the whole thing. Um, and I'm glad that people have actually stood up to, be, um, to say that the government just... Leave it alone with this one. I mean, there's one or two things that obviously wish that they wouldn't get involved involved with at all. And um, yeah, hopefully um, they'll start listening to fans and say, right, let's actually maybe tweak a few things because yeah. maybe being a wee bit too hard, but don't hold your breath. Yeah, I know. No, I'm super proud of the Scottish football community. That's one of the best things that we have in this country is that we love our football and we protect it ourselves. Absolute class. Uh, we should also just uh, point out that Stephen Naismith is now officially charged of hearts, everyone. It was the greatest uh, greatest secret of all time. So shocked at that. <laughs> yeah, it was so funny. Brand new it? information. Uh, but it turns out they, li- they lied, actually. They lied to us all. Um, you know, technical technical director, my arse. He was the manager yeah. this whole time, hiding yeah. behind Frank McAvoy. Don't tell you, Aoife. <laughs> <laughs> it was such we a wouldn't. um they weren't exactly the most subtle about it you know they basically <laughs> came in and said we are doing this because Stephen Naismith doesn't have the right coaching badges to manage in the conference league so Aye. it's always going to be a case as soon as Hearts get knocked out of Europe <laughs> that this change was going to happen and I mean their Sky Sports interview at the start of the season where they're trying to say well Frank McAvoy say I picked the team and all this it was just cringe where they're like just stop why just be honest just um I don't I mean personally I don't know why Hearts have went with Stephen Naismith as manager because I think he's far too inexperienced especially without the coaching badges but that's a personal issue but now that it's sorted we'll wait and see and what, what's going to happen though because if uh, Hearts qualify for Europe and he still doesn't have his badges he's failed these UEFA badges do they go back to the same way for another Maybe. couple of months till they're knocked out again it's a really good point because I don't know I actually don't know the situation with his coaching badges or how far away he would be but I imagine it's quite far so yeah I heard it two years <laughs> Yeah, so there you go. Two years. Right, shall we get on to talk about Scotland? Because that's what really matters. Yes, please. Yes. Absolutely. And Marshall has saved! Yes! One big yes! Scotland's 100% record continues in this Euro 2024 qualifying. We absolutely destroyed Cyprus. Uh, in Larnaca, it was delicious. Uh, three goals. Ryan Porteous got the second. Why did I start with him? Scott McTominay opened it because uh, he's an absolute goal machine. And John McGinn. Do you know the one thing that struck me about this performance was it's always one of those games where we're, we go into this, no matter what stage we've been under the last 20 years, we should always be beating Cyprus, right? But this is always the type of game where we would maybe struggle to a 1-0 win. Or maybe a two-one or something like that, where like they take the lead. Or this was the most assured performance under a like tricky setting. And I know we're all kind of like you know just enjoying the wave at the moment, but I just couldn't believe how comfortable this was, John. It was like a, it was as if we were there for business and we did our business yeah. all over. Yeah, them. I, I mean, we got the business done in that first half hour. Um, you know, we were. So composed. I mean, apart from a five minute spell where they had a shot that was just way, which Angus Gunn had covered anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we were in total control of that game. It was nice going into this game. I, I'd heard a lot of people say, I still have a fear about this game because of things in the past. I thought, mm, no, I had absolutely oh, I, zero I, fear I, about I this fear. for the first time I, in the 80s. No, I didn't. I, I mean, I, I'm usually in that camp of, oh, God, I think it's usually... just I'm so ingrained. I think I texted you, Andrew, <laughs> before the game going, I've got the fear. 
and it's just yeah. it's so ingrained in you that it, I don't I don't know if that'll ever go away. It's that's and I think I said it in the podcast last week as well. I was like, ah, oh, stuffy one now win because it's just these games in the heat against the, the smaller teams in the group. I just I have more confidence going in against Spain at home than I do the likes of Cyprus away. I, yeah. I, I don't what, think I'll ever shift that. Does that does that performance then give you the confidence that we are now a team? Yep. Going up against t- other you know, smaller nations that aren't, uh, don't have the play. Well, teams that we should beat, we we are mm-hmm. going to beat them now. Like there's, the, the, we are so focused in our own heads. Steve Clark uh, and his coaching staff have got all the players. I think it was John Carver said before the game. He's never um, coached a team who have been so focused before. Like all the players are just, they're so determined to qualify especially now the situation that we're in uh laura like you you can't be are you still nervous is, is it still <laughs> the case that you think we could maybe still screw this up i still i'm not booking anything yet because I, I need I, to get it really i can't I, I, I need to get it over the line i don't want to jinx it i, I don't want to do anything that I, I don't know i i just feel like if i'm not going to be the same cautious nervous scarred right. Um, Tartan Army member, I'm going to be this overconfident, cocky, complacent, arrogant Scotland fan. And I I, I don't want to be like that I, because to me, that's kind of what the England are like. And I feel like we are the kind of more diplomatic. <laughs> I don't know if anyone saw, Um, it was England's game against Ukraine on Saturday, Gareth Southgate's post-match interview. Now, the, he got asked after the game, and I think the wording was, now you can't now qualify in this window, in this break, and you now have to wait until October. How frustrating is that? Oh, and I just wow. thought, see, the, that see that language. Can you <laughs> imagine joke. if someone had asked Steve Clark that and it, they said, oh, well, you know, you need to wait till October now. He'd, like, imagine his reaction to that. It is that sort of arrogance of, well, we need to wait now. And we're all sitting here going, when are we going to do it? When are we going to get over the line? Like we're so excited for when the day finally comes that we're not thinking of. Oh, damn, yeah, that's it didn't the, happen. That, that, that is a, that is a good point, though. Like the the, the whole um, kind of mentality between Scotland fans and England fans are so different. There is an arrogance down down south. There is an arrogance of like we should be like always getting to the semi finals and or the final. And in fact, if we don't get to the final, it's a it's a total you know failure. And it, it's it's mad, isn't it? Because I I love just being so happy. <laughs> you know? yeah, because know. before, England fans would always be like, oh, come back to us when you qualify for a tournament. And I've seen it starting to creep in now where they, they, they instead now say, oh, come back to us when you get out of the group stages of a tournament. Mm. And it's like, hmm. I'm just enjoying this. Can we, We're not going to get down to like semantics here. I'm no. just enjoying this moment and being hmm. a bloody good team. Do, do you know what's um, incredible? T- ten years, ten and a half years ago, Scotland were the first or one of the first teams to get knocked out World Cup qualifying from Europe because mm-hmm. we'd got two points from six games. And now if the result goes our way on Tuesday, well, I suspect it won't because I haven't watched Georgia the other night, I have no confidence <laughs> in them. But if that ends up a draw, we are the first to qualify yeah. for years 2024. Ten years, that is incredible. It is amazing, um, but you, you also look at the squad of players that we have now and I... C- I remember not too long ago we were kind of starting to talk about players who were, you know, moving and playing in the the, the English Premier League. Just footballers that are now plying their trade in at the top top level, and you can even say that with players that are on the bench, like it's mad. But the, there's there's just that mentality that Steve Clark has absolutely engineered. Because when you think about like Scott McTominay, he was someone that Steve Clark was putting in defence. When he first started, so that the the evolution of Clark's team is 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 incredible. Not just by the the structure, but just of the camp. There's just a we're such a focused team, we're a determined team, but we such a belief as well amongst our sides. And the, to go, leading us into the England game, Laura, and talking about their arrogance, we're above them, and you know we're we're a, we're a Group A. Uh, or a League yep. A team, they're a League B team. They got relegated. 
exactly. So, we're above them in leagues. We've got 100% record and they don't. I mean, they're coming yeah. to play the Giants right now. We're the best yeah. team in Europe. I, I mean, literally. Calm down. Literally. No, Hold literally. On. Did, you, did you not just say you didn't want to say? become an arrogant, <laughs> kind of annoying Scotland fan? You want to be oh, Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. We are literally the best team in Scotland. We are literally the best team in Europe right now. The, the, no, look not. at the table. Portugal are. Oh, wait. Did Portugal win last night? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Portugal. Yeah, Portugal. Went, yeah. God damn it. Okay, right. Scrap that. We are the second best team in Europe. <laughs> no, you we can the... just. This is. I know you're not a a a, a person who loves stats, Laura. But you just you, you reframe the 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 point and say like we're joint. We're the joint best team. We are joint. I didn't well realize that Portugal. Sorry, I didn't realize Portugal had won on Saturday night. Okay, I, I take that back. <laughs> okay, but we are second. God, you're best so arrogant, Laura. <laughs> See what you were trying to touch on with McTominay there. Uh, can we just like, look at just how incredible his journey has been for Scotland? Mm -hmm. This is a boy who still can't even get into his club side. <laughs> can't even yeah. get into the squad how? right now, which is just absolutely mental. And our mince. <laughs> well, we didn't really know where to play him. I, I remember it being discussed where he got played, obviously, in central defence. He played kind of deep in midfield. And he was better... Scotland were better when he played in defence, but he was better individually when time, he played yeah. in midfield. Mm -hmm. And it was that sort of balance of how do we get him to work for the team, but how do we also get him to work for himself personally? And see moving him forward now into an even more attacking role, it feels like we've just absolutely clicked because he's now equal top goal scorer in the qualification campaign. And you look at the table and you've got... Lukaku is on equal goals with him. You've got Ronaldo mm -hmm. like, below him in the table. Mm -hmm. This boy is just like Scotland's Braveheart right now. He is scoring for fun. It's the emergence of other players that is uh, forcing, or not forcing, but allowing Clark to put players in the best positions. So he already cured the, the Tierney-Robertson debate. We've had the likes of Porteous come through to play centre-half which allows McTominay not to even be involved in the defensive equation. So it's all these all these little gears are shifting into the right place. And it must be so good for Clark to just, not just work on the background kind of stuff, but be able to pick a squad. And it's funny because when we talk about playing England, Southgate's getting absolutely bashed right now with playing players that are not playing for their, their clubs. But we can rely on the players that are not playing for their <laughs> clubs because they're actually playing better for their national team. Uh, it's just amazing. I love it. If this is if this is Scott McTominay when he's not match sharp, imagine yeah. what he's going to be like when he's playing on a regular basis. If this is going to continue over the season and he's not going to get picked for Man United, he has to push to get out in January because with the, the summer, looking ahead to the summer, if he is on it in the summer, bloody hell. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I still don't get why Man United weren't prepared to sell him in the summer. Um and I heard rumor, someone put out a rumor that um, I ten high points to freeze him out. We'll just sell him, you know, make your profit on him. I just don't, I just don't get it. I think what sums up this, the depth of the squad that we have, guys, is that we've got two guys from Serie A, one who can't get in this team, he can only get on the bench, another one in Josh Doig who can't even get in the squad. Yeah. These are guys in Serie A doing pretty well. They Ferguson are. has recently scored against Juventus, for God's sake, mm -hmm. and he can't get in this Scotland team. That wouldn't have been heard of years ago. This kind of leads me on to um, the story that was coming through the last few days about Harvey Barnes, uh, the Newcastle winger, uh, potentially changing his allegiance to, to Scotland. We all know Laura's thoughts on players who have played for England in the national setups <laughs> and then changing their allegiance. She's not a fan. This is, a, this is even no, worse, though. There, well, uh, no, no, it's worse in your eyes. It's worse in your eyes and in He's your He's played for the idea. England first team. He has a, in a scored friendly. two goals. It doesn't matter, he's played for the first team. He has scored two goals against Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry, but where do we draw the line here? Come on. See, see, see be fair to Laura on that one. If he's had a cap for England, regardless of whether it was a, a friendly against whoever or a, um, a senior game, that shouldn't be allowed in, uh, in my eyes. Like Tom Kearney, I think, got a cap in a Scotland um, game against Costa Rica and then he wanted to not play for his anymore, wanted to play for England. That right. shouldn't be allowed. In fact, is Declan Rice not part of that as well? He played for <laughs> Ireland in a couple of friendlies and, and then deflected to England. Jack Grealish and Jack well. Grealish as well, yeah. But I'm there's, sorry, there's... that shouldn't be allowed for me. No. no. Yeah, I get, not... I get that there's a feeling about it. I mean, the same could be said for uh, the likes of Elliot Anderson, who could have played against Cy Cyprus there's also the new rule that if you're under 21 and you get like a senior cap 
if you get more than three, you're kind of locked in. But if it's less than three, you can still, you know, okay. play for, I know for I'm, national I know I'm, team. But yeah, it's I know I'm quite strict on on my beliefs, and I don't expect a lot of people to agree with me. But in general terms, I think we need to sort of draw the line here. And I, to me, even as a normal, sane, rational thinking person, I feel like that line is getting pushed a wee bit too far now. True. Well, I mean, we 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 are still relying on a few Scottish grannies to help us along the way at the moment. But uh, don't need them. If we if we talk about help us. <laughs> God bless you, Lord. Um, <laughs> if we if we turn our attention to England on Tuesday night, um it it's gonna be a weird atmosphere, I think, John. It's gonna be raucous, it's gonna be really exciting and stuff like that. But this is gonna be the first Hamden game after Craig Brown passed away. So I don't know if there's any uh special kind of things being prepared for for the game but it's it's certainly going to be another reason that the scotland team's going to be fired up to to smash them i'd like to think they'll have something to, i mean they'll certainly have the minute applause for them at the start um maybe i don't know if some will be including the commemorative members of the program but um then um you can't you yes, can't not put something, something in yeah I I, you can't not have something to attribute to arguably our greatest manager and this is the guy that was the last one to take us to the World Cup he took us to two consecutive tournaments only two managers have done that Andy Roxburgh being the other one and um, he beat England yeah he's the last one to beat England and by I, I don't know if he's um, read the blog that I put on SFF podcast how fitting a tribute would it be to Craig that um, we get a win in the first game at home since his sad passing and it comes against England and he's no longer got that I was the last man to be mm. beat England Some I've got someone else that's doing that now um and I've been quite open with this, which is almost um scary. I think we're overdue a win against them. Um because we haven't been them at Hamden since eighty five when it's golf scored and also we're so close in twenty seventeen. Um I also don't think England's focus is gonna be there and I think we can take advantage. I think we're gonna be so up for this and so determined because of the occasion. I think we're gonna beat them. What happens if the Georgia Norway game doesn't run in the same time to ours. So, for example, what if they finish and they'd actually finish a draw, but we've got say eight minutes left to play, play in ours? Party so you've got thing. this, you've got this party in the stands. How do the players re- react to that? <laughs> <laughs> Considering it is a friendly, um, you could probably forgive a little bit of him. Um, attention span slipping slightly but it's a really yeah. strange kind of scenario well they that, kick off at the same time we, just yeah. check that I, they, they, they should i think the second half should definitely be trying you know i think scotland should try and to push second half to make sure they're somebody in security should be checking that to make sure it's in sync it's security. I, think, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I, um, I think there's more likelihood that the norway game will overrun than ours i think given ours is a friendly I don't think the referee's going to be that pernickety in eight, adding yeah, on 11 true. minutes to, um, for our game to be proved perfectly honest. Oh, can you imagine if we're waiting surprised. on the pitch? What, that's yeah, the thing true. as well. What if it's like, say, 1-0? Do, do the players wait? Do, they surely don't go down the tunnel. The oh, players, I think they will. The, the, the fans can't get kicked out of Hamden, surely, if there's five minutes left to play and they're still, you know, it's hanging in the balance. You need to wait. You need to wait and let it's the fans... Funny. As funny as that is, I reckon Steve Clark is so professional. He would just yeah. be like, come on, lads, let's not. You know, even if we qualify, it would be a great moment for us. This is me being Steve Clark right now. It would be a great moment for us, all that stuff. Blah, blah, blah. But it would be uh, like, but we need to focus on now winning no. the Euros. <laughs> <laughs> but it won't no, be that thing. It would just let, like, he's so plain sailing. No, he'd, he'd let so, them enjoy like, the moment. Being, yeah. He'd, no, he well, definitely would enjoy the moment. But it would be more it, it, a case of they'd run back out the tunnel again to see the fans rather than waiting on the pitch. Well, do you think the fans will wait in the ground? Oh, if yeah, it's on I think so. yeah. Definitely. yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. They should put the score on the big screen. If it's coming last five minutes and it's sitting as a draw, they should put the score on the big screen. <laughs> I think there'll be enough people with phones checking it, to be fair. <laughs> exactly. Oh, I don't know. The, the, the signal in Hamden is an absolute nightmare. Yeah, so, but do you know what? Just going on what John said earlier, um, I know you were saying it's very unlikely it's going to happen, but the last meeting between them in this qualifying campaign ended one each. So have hmm. faith. Hold out your hope. It, it happened only a few months ago, so it, it will happen again. Yeah, I just, think, I just think now that Georgia haven't been spanked 7-1 at home and, um, you know, 
Uh, but they had to play Norway in the rain. as well. Norway have got Haaland back as well. They didn't have Haaland last time as well. I mean, true, only guys true. like Guy Kendrick can handle him, to be fair. So, <laughs> yeah, It was raining true. in Georgia, though. And uh, it seems to be that Georgia just cannot handle a bit of rain. So hopefully it's, uh, hopefully it's maybe a little, a little sunnier in Oslo. One question for you, John. Uh, if we do go to Germany, I know you're a family man. Are you going? Are you gonna, are you, have, you, have you planted the seed early with the missus and made sure that if we qualify, I'm not around? I would, I would love to go, and um, you know, my wife would never stop me going, and um, but it's down to finances. We'll just need to wait and see. I need to be That's realistic a good point. That. that is a good point. I mean, it's going to be an absolute party for weeks, and even if we get knocked out, we'll probably be staying for longer. <laughs> I mean, the fan zones that let um. You know, within Scotland, they'll be so good as well that they could be good to That's, go to. Um, I totally. Yeah, it wouldn't be the on. same as going to a tournament. And let's be honest, this is going to be a proper tournament. I mean, compared yes, to the last tick- one. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yes, it was a tick box of saying, I went to see Scotland a major tournament, um, but it wasn't the same circumstances. Yeah. Um, a 25% full Hamden. I am definitely taking advantage of um, not having kids and I'm going to get a one way ticket to Germany if it happens you know not jinxing it I'm not tempting fate here um, and, uh, <laughs> and I'm going to because as John's saying this is the first proper tournament in a while and it's also the last proper tournament in a while as well where it is set in one country and it's it's a good country as well so it's a small <laughs> country where you can tra- you can get transport around the different cities transport's so good as well no yeah problem. and and the beer and and the sausages and it's just it's going to be everything that a tournament should be it is the ultimate dream to get to germany more than it would be to get to you know like uh, like america mexico and canada absolutely fantastic obviously i want to get there but it's going to be so complex in terms of positionings and locations and moving about once you're in a place you're in a place Whereas what I get the sense of with the Tartan Army is they're booking up everywhere right now. They're, they're going to go to Frankfurt. They're going to go to Dusseldorf. They're going to go to Berlin and Munich. And if the matches aren't there, fine, we'll have a party there or we'll get trains and we'll move around. And I think that is what the beauty of a tournament is. And I always remember for the World Cup, in 2006 I had a friend who was travelling at the time and she was in Germany during that and she said there was TV screens just down like main streets set up like multiple screens and everyone was just filling the streets and I've always just had that sort of image in my head of that's what a tournament is and you didn't get that for Euro 2020 and look the, the buzz around Euro 2020 was incredible the kind of days leading up to the tournament starting I don't remember being so high as a Scotland fan, but it always was tinged with that little bit of sadness and regret that we couldn't actually enjoy it the way we'd wanted to. We'd waited for 20 years to enjoy it Mm -hmm. because you were like the amount of people in the stadiums. It was terrible. I was lucky enough to get a ticket for two of the three games. And yeah, you make the most of it, but it was nothing compared to how it should have been. No. And and then um, I just need plug this um for next year because i've got a book coming out in may me and um my excellent co- uh, my co-author neil Dorsey, we are writing this story called um we're going to wembley um scotland's Euro 96 journey so for people who will be flying over to germany they can have a wee book to read on the flight <laughs> oh brilliant man. When, their tenants or whatever when so, is that when is that due out that's due on the 27th of May um next year so it'll be from pitch publishing and we were very fortunate that Four months before he passed away, we got to speak to Craig Brett. So we got one of the la- one of the last interviews oh, with Craig. Wow. So he would, even though he was suffering, he was willing to help us um, with this. So I'll always be grateful. And there's a few other players like Colin Caldwell spoken, Stuart McCall spoken, fan story. So yeah, and um, yeah, so Neil and I are looking forward to this. So um, I'm just picturing the scene of um, you know people going into W. H. Smiths in the Glasgow Airport, buying the book and getting on the flight. So Amazing, John. Oh, That's really nice. chuffed for you, mate. That's fantastic news. I'll definitely be getting a copy. <laughs> That's for sure. Hopefully I'll be flying out. We'll see <laughs> if I can get it round. The missus, don't know. Get a but... camper van and make it a family holiday. That would be so good, actually. Take the podcast on tour as well. Take the podcast on tour. Even better. Yep. Let's hire uh, uh, the Scottish football show Battle Bus. <laughs> <laughs> And there's your title. There you go. <laughs> a Scottish football show battle bus, Laura. We need some money. I am all for it. <laughs> yeah, if, you want, to spo- if you want to sponsor here. the Scottish football show and lend us a bus <laughs> to go to, Gla- go to Glasgow, 
uh, yeah, we could do Glasgow sometime, but we could also do Germany. Oh, that would be so good. A Scottish oh, official I'm, battle I'm bus. absolutely dreaming of next summer now. That'd be <laughs> that's over the so line. good. But we'd also we have to make sure that we fill out all the paperwork so that if we go for a beer, we have a substantial meal or a, um, <laughs> all that stuff. We need to make sure that we're 10 miles from the ground. Okay, cool. We can do that. We can muster that. Nah, the well, German let's... government are cool. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, they let's, let you uh, drink let's... in the grounds. It's all good. Shall we dust off our lederhosen and, um, you know, stock up on some Warsteiner, Paul Lanner or uh, Frankenscanner? That's the weirdest beer I've ever had, actually, from Germany. Francis, it tastes like bubble gum. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it. We'll see what happens. Laura's obviously never had Franziskaner. Uh, no, I can recommend no. also uh, Burgermeister in Krautsburg in Berlin. That's uh, one of the best burgers I've ever had. So yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Let's just qualify though first. I'm jumping the gun. Yes, please. You're yeah. absolutely jumping ahead here. Yeah. Yeah. And well, once, that's it. once we qualify, get Derek Ray on the show because he will give you everything you need to know. You'll probably hear from him soon. Trust me. <laughs> uh, right. That's it for another week. Uh, we hope you enjoy your Tuesday night. Laura, John, absolute class having both of you on. Uh, if you enjoyed the podcast, you can always follow us on Twitter. Uh, tell us we're wrong. <laughs> All right. Um, Laura's normally wrong. But uh, you can subscribe to YouTube. Uh, we can go to, uh, where is it? Uh, YouTube, TikTok, and Facebook, Laura. Apologies. Uh, we're all over the platforms. And Instagram. Days. Oh, and Instagram. Thank you. All Cheers. of them. All everywhere of them. you want us, we're here. Yeah. We are, we are everywhere you don't want us to be. So it's that time for me to say go and listen to something else now, Scottish, preferably. Bye. <laughs>